Good day, and welcome to Lesson 12 in our study of the Book of Judges. Now, up to this point in time, we've been studying the people that God called to be judges over Israel, to be leaders over Israel in their times of trouble, times when they turned away from God. And we've seen a number of these people, how God called strong leaders to come forward and rescue the Israelites from their problems with their enemies. The last one was Gideon, and of course we saw him initially as a shy man, not very, not very uh, courageous. He was threshing wheat in a wine press for fear of the Midianites, and that God called him to be a leader of Israel, and with God's help, and after testing God a number of times, he did succeed and with God's help bringing Israel away from the reign of the Midianites. But God also tested him, and he eventually did this with only 300 men, both routing the main army of the Midianites and also the remnant of the army, and bringing retribution against those other members of the Israeli tribes who refused to help him during his time of need. But then things went south. He began to act like a king, although he refused to be called a king and said neither he nor his son would be king over Israel, only the Lord would be. He started to act like a king. He collected considerable wealth and he collected a number of wives and concubines, one being a concubine from Shechem, by whom he had this son Abimelech. So chapter 9 is the story of Abimelech and of what happens when people do things without God's direction and without God's help and in defiance of really what God wants. And Abimelech was the son of Gideon and Abimelech means son of a king. Now Gideon had 70 sons and this Abimelech went back to Shechem, where his mother came from. And this is where the story in chapter 9 begins, because this is not a story of judges. This is a story of what happens when people don't do what God really asks them to do. So it says, Abimelech, the son of Jerubbabel, went to Shechem, to his mother's brothers, and spoke with them. And he went on to say, Speak to the hearing of all the men of Shechem, which is better for you that all 70 of the sons of Jerubbabel reign over you, or that one reigns over you. Remember, I am your own flesh and bone. And his mother's brothers spoke this up. The, he put in a bit of a, uh, a groundswell of support for Abimelech, saying he is our brother. So they went behind him. And then at the same time, he took some money from the temple of Beth Bereth, Baal Bereth, the god that they had worshipped and the god that they had initially, the Israelites had initially gone to worship after coming away from Jehovah. They took money from, money from this, hired some uh, retro, 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 retrobates, some people who were not very well thought of, gave him 70 shekels of silver, and then he had them kill his other brothers, so that he was the only one left. So, as it said, he went to his father's house at Ophir and killed his brothers, the 70 sons of Jerubbabel, on one stone. But one escaped. Jotham, the youngest son, escaped because he hid himself. And these, then after these people were killed, the people from Shechem and all of Beth Milo, which is, a, which is apparently a fortress or a nearby fortress, and they went and made Abimelech king beside the Terebeth tree at the pillar that was in Shechem. Now this tree was very, it was famous because this is the tree under which apparently Joshua gave the... Uh, gave the, left, left the place a copy of the law of God under this tree, Joshua, when he was coming through in his conquering days. 
So now Abimelech was the only son that left along with his Jotham, and the people crowned him as king. So he became, in essence, the first king of Israel. It is said that Gideon has said now that he nor his son would be king, but yet his son sort of usurped this. He apparently became interested and liked the trappings of royalty and wanted the kingship for himself. Jotham, however, escaped and went to the top of Mount Gerizim. And Mount Gerizim is also a famous place uh, in, in the Bible. In Deuteronomy and Joshua, it was a mountain from which Israel heard the blessings of God pronounced. It was a, it was a part, it took part in a lot of the Old Testament. And Jotham went to the top of this mountain. Now it sounds kind of strange that you go to the top of a mountain and it said, and cry out, and all the people in the town below could hear, but if you were ever in, the, in that country, in that part of the world, you understand how in certain areas, in certain configurations of the land, in the dry air, how far sound can actually travel, and I've seen this myself, where sound can travel an inordinate distance and be still distinctly heard. So Jotham went to this top and cried out and listened and gave this parable about the trees that went forth to anoint a king. And each tree, each tree when asked to be to be the to reign over the others, denied it because the olive tree said, Why should I cease giving my oil with which they honor God and men? And the fig tree said, Why should I cease giving my sweetness and my good fruit and go away sway over other trees? And the tree said to the vine, Why should I cease my new wine, which cheers both God and men, and go to sway over them? Then they all said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said, In truth, you anoint me as king over you. Then come and take shelter in my shade. Now, obviously you can't get much shelter in the shade of a bramble. But the idea here is that the people, the trees, representing the people who had the right to be king, had the right to be a leader, all were not asked. They were all declined. And the leadership was left to the bramble, to the lowest, to the scrub bush, to the least worthy to be king. And this is how he was referring to Amimelech, that he was a bramble. The people anointed a bramble as king because the people who should be king were all killed. They had all been killed by Abimelech's men. So the people actually were anointing a bramble. Abimelech considered to be a bramble as king over them. And the bramble said, if fire come out of the bramble, but if, if come and take shelter, but if not, but fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. What it's saying is, if you don't honor me, then destruction will come upon you. And this is what he's saying about uh, Abimelech, that make him king and destruction will come upon you. But this is what they did. And therefore, he's saying also in someone, if you have acted truthfully in making Abimelech in honor in truthfully in sincerity, and you've done well with him, then you have risen up and then you have, you have, you've done fine. But this is all done in tongue-in-cheek. This is done in a sarcastic way because obviously they did not do well with the house of Jerubbabel. They did not do well with Gideon. And therefore, he said, if you have done this, fine, in truth and sincerity, but if you have risen up against my father's house this day and killed his 70 sons on one stone, and made Abimelech the son of his female servant king over the men of Shechem because he is your brother. If you have acted in truth and sincerity, then rejoice. If you've acted truthfully, what you really feel to be the truth, really feel to be sincere, really feel to be the right way to do it, then rejoice and accept Abimelech as your king. But if not, then let fire come from him and devour the men of Shechem and Beth Malor, and let fire come from the men of Shechem and from Beth Malor, and devour Abimelech. 
that will be war between them. There will be fighting. And this is what happens when God is not in the picture. So Jotham said this, and then he ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there. But he made this prophecy. Now, Abimelech was made king, and he apparently reigned for three years. But during this period of time, frictions developed. We don't know the exact story, but, but there was friction that developed. So God sent a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and there start to be some treacherous dealings. If you, if, you, if you gain power by treachery, you're going to be defeated by treachery. You can't sort of get away by building something on an evil base and expect not evil to come after you in turn. So it said, they began to deal treacherously with Abimelech and they wanted the crime against these 70 men eventually settled. So these men started to act in defiance of the king. They started to lay in wait and ambush against him and his people. They started to interfe interfere with the trade of the area. They robbed all who passed by them along their way. They interfered with the trade. They had raids on, the, on Abimelech's people. And this got back to the king of Abimelech. And it was told to him. Now, one of the people that was, that was initially sent away was a man called Gale, and he came with his brothers and went over to Shechem and started to win the confidence of these people. And as a result of that, he became very haughty. He began to become very boisterous, very vociferous against Abimelech. And it also says they went into the vineyards and made wine and made merry and went into the house of their God, into their temple and ate and drank and cursed Abimelech. And then Gael in his haughtiness gave a challenge to the king to come after him. Why should we serve him? Why should we continue to serve this king and not, the son, and not someone else? He said, is he not the son of Jubabel? Is he not Zubal, his officer? These people were from, were, were from Shechem, but they weren't original people from Shechem. And it says, serve the men of Hanor, Hamor, the father of Shechem. Hamor was the father who built, who started the city of Shechem. And he was, a co he was associated with Joshua and with, even with Abraham. And it says, if only this people were under my authority, Gail, uh, Gail said, if these people were under my authority, I would remove Abimelech. In other words, he wanted Abimelech's dictatorship transferred to him, is what he wanted. He wanted to be the king himself. And he made this threat against the king. Now, the, king, the ruler or the mayor of the city or the ruler of the city was an ally of Abimelech. He gave word of this back to the king. And of course, then the treachery began even further. So he sent word to Abimelech, who sent men to lie in wait, to ambush Gael. And the men of Gael went, they came out of the city. And this was done at night. And it was done in a, in a, in a, in a, in a way of subterfuge. Uh, and this is told here that you will come at night, you will lie in wait, you shall rise and rush the city. And this is what happened. They did this. Gael went out, uh, stood in the entrance, and the people who were Abimelech rose up. But Zebul said, tried to deceive and say that Gael was only seeing things when, they, when he saw these shadows of the mountains, these people coming towards him. And as a result, Abimelech conquered Gael and conquered the city again. The next day, people went out apparently to do their work and Abimelech entered the city and 
began to storm the tower there and set fire to it and destroyed all the people of Shechem essentially. In fact, the city of Shechem was completely destroyed and it was not rebuilt until a few hundred years later during the, during the time of Jeroboam, the son of Solomon, or the, uh, the not the son of Solomon, but the uh, uh, the person who took over part of the of the kingdom from Solomon. That wasn't enough. So then, Abimelech went after the next the neighboring town, and uh, went to Thebes and encamped there and stormed it. And there's a strong tower in the center of that city as well. But he wanted to be conquering all of the people who may have supported Shechem. So he went in and conquered this city as well and tried to burn down the tower in Thebes, the same as he did the tower in Shechem. However, this time his plot was foiled by a woman who apparently threw down part of a millstone and killed Abimelech, or made his mortally wounded. But even in his deathbed, his pride was such that he did not want it to be known that he was killed by a woman. He asked his servant, he asked his, his uh, armor bearer to draw your sword and kill me, lest men say of me, a woman killed me. And this is what happened. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed and went home. It was all because of one person stirring up all of this trouble. After he was dead, the people, of, the people of Israel went home, and apparently there was peace there again for a period of time. And it says, Thus God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father by killing his 70 brothers. And all the evil of the men of Shechem God returned on their own heads. And on them came the curse of Shatham, the son of Jerubbabel, or the son of Gideon. So this whole story is one of violence. It's one of warfare. It's one of interpersonal tragedy and it what, it's what happens when the pride of people, the desires of men outweigh the desires of God, it outweighs what God wants for people. When people want more than they're really deserving of, when people want more than they're supposed to have, when people decide to take matters into their own hands, trouble ensues. And when you get what you apparently want by treachery, or by subterfuge, or by, or by devious means, then it's usually treachery and devious means that come back to haunt you. See, God is behind almost everything. And if we believe that God doesn't have a say in what we do, even if we don't think he has, or even if we don't want him to have, or even if we think we're doing it on our own, then we're deceived because he controls really everything. And he can, we can, he can bring vengeance upon people in his own way. So this whole story of Abimelech is a story of someone who tries to usurp a judgeship or a kingship, and in fact does for a period of time become king over a small portion of Israel. And it's said that his kingship only extended to a small area around Shechem. But he was actually the first king of Israel, even though he was not really recognized and accepted by most of the people. But he got there by a devious means. He got there by murder. He got there by treachery. And it was through treachery that people got back at him. So all this happened because of the, the desire of one person to make himself as king over Israel and ignoring the fact that God was choosing people that God wanted to be the judges and the leaders of the country. So this is a bit of an aside, it's a bit away from the judgeship per se, but it does show what happens 
and what happened to this part of Israel, how people, how the people became so involved and interwoven in intrigue and treachery because of the desires primarily and apparently the, the personality of one individual. So we'll get on to chapter 10 into what, into what happened after Abimelech was out of the picture. We'll get into that next week. But in the meantime, I hope you understand that there is a meaning and a reason for why things happen, even though we don't have to see the reason on the surface. There often is underlying a plan and a thing that happens when we try to over, over, uh, overtake or do more than what we're really meant to be. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you next week and we'll get into chapter 10. Bye for now.